So a question I've been asked a lot is what graphics card do I need to power a 21x9 monitor? And instead of going through the same kind of thing each time with every single person, I thought it best we hit this topic on the head here. Now first of all, let's confirm that this is May 2016 and we have just had the 1080 and 1070 GPU benchmarks released for Nvidia's new cards. So if you're watching this in a year's time or more, well, it's probably in need of an update to this video, as these things change significantly with each new GPU launch. And not to mention, we have AMD's new lineup coming, well, we hope soon, in June, but there's no confirmation of that yet. So again, that will change how these things look. But this is how it stands currently. So first of all, there are a few variables to take into consideration when talking about gaming at 21x9, because this isn't exactly a very specific question. Resolution, refresh rates, games, all vary person to person. What you expect to run in one way is likely to be very different to many other people. So let's first assume that you were using a recent i5 or i7 processor and other components in order to allow for minimal bottlenecking, affecting your performance as a whole, as we're just focusing on GPUs here. Now the other side you need to account for is what resolution do you intend to run? 2560 by 1080 or 3440 by 1440? The difference is extremely significant. There's no such thing as just running 21 by 9. There's different levels of 21 by 9. And you will need a very powerful rig for 3440 by 1440 at 60 FPS, for example, whereas 60 FPS at 2560 by 1080 is nowhere near as difficult on identical settings. I also want to restrict us to 60 FPS or above gaming. Obviously you can go for 30 FPS, but we are PC gamers, and the simple fact is 30 FPS is not good enough. So even if it means dropping graphic settings, aim 100% for that 60 FPS at all times. My other aim is for us to achieve native resolution at all times. <laughs> now I know this is going to sound like stalling, but it simply is proof of the number of variables you want to think of. My last point is I'm looking at current AAA games like The Division as benchmark points as indie games and the like should run perfectly if you can run AAA games. Well, I would hope so anyway. Optimization is always a recurring issue. So let's do the easy one first. 2560 by 1080. The reason this is the easiest of the two is that the performance impact from 1920 by 1080 to 2560 by 1080 is negligible on the grand scale of things. And so you can use performance benchmarks for graphics cards at 1920 by 1080, of which there is an abundance, to help you see what you can expect on the ultra wide variant. I would expect around 5, maybe 10 FPS difference in games between the two. Rather minimal. So at 2560x1080, you have the largest selection of cards without doubt, and of the following, you really are only restricted by your budget. The lowest card I would go with is the GTX 750Ti, or on the AMD side, an R9270X, both about £100 cards. The AMD offering slightly more powerful, but both base options that won't blow anyone away, but should let you enter the gaming world with little trouble. Obviously, it should be noted you want to be overclocking any choice at the lower end of the GPU market in order to suck as much power as possible for your money. Above these two cards, for example, the 900 series from Nvidia offers a good range of money and power options, and for AMD cards, the Radeon R9 380, the 380X and so forth are great alternatives. What should be labored is, I'd say, work out first what your budget is before you start looking at cards, because <laughs> you'll just end up spending far more money on a GPU than you originally wanted, because you'll see the potential of the next card up, and you'll want that. So suffice it to say, you are on PC, and if you decide to go for a lower, cheaper, less powerful card now, and then later have the money and want to get that, more powerful card, you're on PC. You have the amazing ability of upgradability, so you're not restricted with your first choice. 
So what's clear is that 1080p you have complete freedom. As for example, you can play Doom on bare minimum settings on the most basic GPU and get over 60 FPS. Or you can stick on nightmare settings like displayed in my previous video and maintain 60 FPS on a 980 Ti but yet still get close to 60 FPS and potentially dip below even on such a powerful card. And that's my point, you can always crank graphic settings way up to make any card you have sweat damn hard for those extra little details, or you can drop settings way down to compensate for lack of GPU power. Again, it is your freedom, your choice with 1080p. Now the other side of 21x9, 3440 by 1440 here you are trading that flexibility and power options for a relatively brand new arena for gaming, as only really in the last two years has such resolution gaming become truly feasible for quality playing, as GPUs are just struggling to deal with the pixel density. Now what I always find is people will inevitably call me out and say oh no I got this or that FPS at these settings and you're totally lowballing the performance. But in my experience, medium settings are really the current limit for GPUs looking for 60 FPS in 2016 games. And many need even lower, like The Division, a truly gorgeous game. Doom is gorgeous, but not on the scale of The Division, and so can be run on high settings, but it does then dip below 60. And this is why G-Sync and FreeSync monitors are so vital for 3440 by 1440 gaming. Now, step back to something like Battlefield 4, three years old now, and that can run ultra settings at over 60 FPS on a GTX 980 Ti. But the problem is, it is an example of a very good PC port, and yes, it's good looking, but it won't compare to releases like Battlefield 1 coming out in a few months. So yes, 3440x1440 is a damn hard thing to power, and whilst the GTX 1080 has somewhat of an improvement in power over 980 Ti, as benchmarks are clearly proving, it's only about a 20% improvement in the best case scenario. Most cases placing it between 20 and 25 frames of a 980 Ti. So it's not the key to unlocking 120 FPS at 3440 by 1440 ultra settings. We need at least a 1080 Ti for that. Anyway, back on track. What this brings me to is I wouldn't recommend gaming on a 3440 by 1440 monitor with less than a 980 preferably a 980 Ti, 1070 or 1080 when those release soon, and on the AMD side an R9 390 and R9 Fury and Fury X are good options. Now obviously AMD have got their new lineup coming out so I'll probably make a second part to this just talking about the new AMD cards and I'm assuming those I hope are going to be a lot more powerful than the Fury Fury X. So those will be your better alternatives for 1440p gaming. Now I'm sure many people are gaming with lesser cards and will argue with me saying that they have no problem using them, but the simple fact is you need the power of a 980 Ti or higher to make genuinely fantastic use of your screen quality. Offerings like the X34 Predator have 100 FPS abilities to boot as well, and whilst brand new releases are unlikely to hit those heights, look back a few years and you'll be gracing games with much higher numbers with the right GPU power. If you go too low, you simply aren't making any use of that 1440p screen. Now another side of this is you have variants of each of these cards. For example, the EVGA 980 Ti is notoriously the most powerful 980 Ti on the market. So remember, the better the model you get, the better you'll be running. But I'm really just talking about base GPU power in this video. And at the lower end, remember to overclock if you can, and obviously try to do it at the higher end as well, as they're all designed to overclock nowadays, and the benefits can be really notable. On the other side of things, the unavoidable fact is 3440 by 1440 monitors are extremely expensive still, and if you are looking to shell out near a grand on a monitor of this quality, you can't justify skimping on a GPU to match. 
Unfortunately, it just doesn't really work like that. You can kind of make it work like that, but in my opinion, I would say stick to 2560 by 1080 and upgrade only when you can afford both the screen and GPU. Because 1080p gaming is still bloody brilliant. Make use of that GPU and pump the settings to Ultra instead of switching to 3440 by 1440 too early. Now the two future announcements I'm waiting for that will change this whole scene even more is firstly, like I said, the AMD Polaris announcement, and secondly, the 1080 Ti. But sadly, who knows when we're going to hear about that. Hopefully it's not too long. Anyway, these are just my thoughts, and whilst I've tried to base my choices on facts as much as possible, I can easily not have chosen a lower enough graphics card, but I feel these are safe card options for those of you unsure what to look for when moving to the ultra-wide life, and if I can help make that transition easier, then I'll be really happy. Anyway, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below and what your experiences are with the GPUs. The more information we can get down in the comments for prospective 21 by 9 is the better. Anyway, give this video a like if you found it useful and subscribe for lots more 21 by 9 content. If you just want ultra wide content immediately, then check out my channel for lots more stuff. And if there isn't something there that you want, comment down below and I'll try and cover whatever it is. See you later.